What is magnetism? Well, magnetism is a force, right? It causes a change in the speed or direction of an object, uh, and which can be attractive or can be repulsive, and it's based on the movement and spin of particles, like the electron. Now, an electron can spin one of two directions, and the easiest thing to do is just show arrows, either up or down, and they reside in orbitals of an atom that are typically paired with opposite spin electrons, which will cancel the magnetic effect. However, some atoms will have a net spin effect, where spin does not cancel. And so we'll show that here as an atom with a net effect. And objects, which include magnets, for example, are made of many atoms that include spinning particles. But if you just look at that magnetism of the atom, they might be pointed in many different directions and they'll cancel for no magnetic force. But when the spin of particles are aligned, there is a magnetic force. And a small magnet has billions and billions of these atoms. And this is what it looks like, right? When you do have a material, ferromagnetic materials, for example, like iron, they can be used to uh, make magnets. And here it's attracting the nail. Key thing to note here is that uh, even at rest, right, nothing is moving in the magnet, both uh, electric and magnetic fields do exist. And the reason why that was pointed out is because now when you change that field, such as the magnet is in motion, it creates an electrical current called induction, which is moving electrons, that's electricity. And Similarly, but just really the opposite, an electrical current now can produce a magnetic field. Turn on the battery, particles move, electrons move in the wire, and it is now attracting those paper clips. That's electromagnetism. In the 1700s and the 1800s, a lot of the early pioneers of both electricity and magnetism led to the conclusion that they're one and the same. They joined those two forces into one. And today, Maxwell's equations are commonly used in this field of electromagnetism. Now, in the 2000s, Robert DeSinti uh, solved some of the paradoxes of electromagnetism. And although the equations are not broadly used, the point particle form is fascinating for its relationship to classical laws. And what are those classical laws? Well, since Laws apply to objects that we measure, uh, and all of these are uh, made of particles, they should also apply to particles. Let's start with Einstein's mass energy equivalence. For a particle at rest, it can be calculated based on the mass of that particle. But really, there's energy even at a distance from that particle, and we'll cover that in a little bit more detail shortly. Now, Objects are made of particles, so it should also apply to large bodies, planets, right, that are also made of particles. And Newton's law of universal gravitation uh, will be explored in further detail, but this is it, two large bodies that are attractive. And it should also apply to Newton's laws of motion, including the second law. And here you see an animation of Newton's cradle, right, a force uh, generates acceleration in objects. And another one of Newton's laws, the centripetal force of an object, and here you see an animation of a satellite in orbit around the Earth and its direction of acceleration and force. Okay, now let's explain that relation. The laws are related. Why? Because fields are waves and particles are waves. Four key assumptions here. The field laws and classical laws converge when you assume, one, that the electron is standing waves of energy. Two, beyond the standing waves, the transition to traveling waves and the electron's radius is incredibly important in tying these field laws and particle laws, classical ones, together. Three, any distance can be calculated for energy because those waves continue. And it's based on constructive wave interference. It might be constructive, it might be destructive for two different types of waves. And this is also important, longitudinal or transverse. Lastly, 
wave interference patterns change for an electron that is in motion. All right, how are all these tied together? Two at rest, Coulomb's law of magnetic moment, the fields, and you can see the classical ones there, Einstein and Newton on the right. Two at rest for two different types of waves, longitudinal and transverse. Two different types of waves for in motion, longitudinal and transverse, for induction and for magnetism. We're going to show how all of these are related once you get down to a particle level. And that's the fascinating thing about using the Sinti's version for induction and for magnetism. So the first law, when at rest, Coulomb's law is Einstein's mass energy when you think of it extending beyond the electron's radius as shown. Now icons are used here because you have to think about particles as waves and so introducing the symbols or the icons for longitudinal traveling waves and the particle which is represented there as a spherical longitudinal standing waves. At a second electron there and now you have the force and that force is the exact same thing I showed earlier the energy but now it's force uh, it's energy at a distance and you see the r squared try this at home right use the mass of the electron and the, and the radius of the electron and you'll see that it's equal to the coulomb force now same thing happens though for the transverse wave in the last one we discovered uh, we went over the longitudinal waves at rest even at rest an electron is spinning creates a transverse wave and that energy is now lost in longitudinal wave energy. But it can be shown that the energy from the magnetic moment of the electron is the same as the gravitational energy for two electrons at a distance of the electron's radius. This one's a little bit more complicated, so you need to see the paper detailing calculations, the URLs in the video description. Okay, now let's explain motion. Right, if that was a billiard ball coming across the table and about to hit another billiard bar, we could model that with Newton's second law. Right? But objects are made of particles, and, and really those particles never touch. If that's an electron and electricity, that forces that electron away long before they collide. So let's look at this in the wave view, right? because all objects are made of particles. A particle in motion changes the constructive wave amplitude. Now that'll accelerate the second particle. In electricity, that's induction. The cool thing about it is this is also Newton's second law when it's explained at the particle level. And again, all of this is equal and can be shown to be equal if you use Distinti's new induction and compare that to Newton's second law when the electron's radius is used as the distance. Now those are longitudinal waves, so in motion, same thing happens for the transverse wave. An electron in an atom might have spin cancellation, no net magnetic effect as was shown earlier until motion, which is electricity. Now that increases its speed, and that can be modeled with the centripetal force, again, part of Newton's laws of motion. Cool thing about this is that the force now, uh, acceleration is in the direction, just like the planets would be, which is perpendicular to the direction that it is moving, the electron. Also, a faster velocity results in a uh, transverse wave with greater amplitude. That's going to cause a greater force, or actually it might cause a more attractive force depending on the cancellation. And that force is electromagnetism, right? It's an induced current, which is electrons at velocity increase their speed. And again, using Distinti's new magnetism, the force is exactly equal to the centripetal force. When? When it's measured at the electron's radius. So that's key to all of this. And depending on the spin of the electron, it can either be constructive or destructive, and that causes one of two directions for the force. But again, it's perpendicular to the direction of motion, just like centripetal force. And that causes the electron to be attracted or propelled, as seen in uh, experiments. And that's it, one set of laws. And the really, really fascinating thing here is that the laws are related because objects are made of particles which are formed of waves. But you have to get it down to the equations that model, where's that commonality? It's an electron at the electron's radius. And once you use that, they converge. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.